Grenada is an exotic island in the West Indies. The island lies in the Caribbean Sea at the southern end of the Lesser Antilles. Grenada is called the Isle of Spice, a name that comes from the nutmeg, mace, cinnamon, cloves, bay leaves, turmeric, chocolate and other spices organically grown on the island. Most of Grenada's landscape was formed by volcanic activity over a million years ago. There are several extinct volcanoes whose craters have transformed into lakes. There is also an underwater volcano with the colorful name Kikemjeni. Grenada has pristine beaches, a rainforest, lush mountains and refreshing waterfalls. This country is composed of the main island of Grenada, two smaller islands, Kerriacou and Petite Martinique, and a few more tiny islands. Mike and I traveled from Guadeloupe all the way down to Grenada, and Grenada ended up being my favorite country and Kerriacou my favorite island. And I'm so excited to show you around. Grenada's main island is only about 34 kilometers or 21 miles long. If you're coming by air, you'll land here at the Maurice Bishop International Airport. If you're coming on a cruise ship, you'll anchor here. San Georges, the capital of Grenada, has a deep natural harbor and picturesque pastel-colored houses sprinkled on its hillsides. The most interesting places you can visit on foot are Fort George, the Chocolate Museum and the harbor. If you decide to rent a car, be aware that the main town is a bit confusing, with several one-way streets that are not indicated, but nothing to worry about. You will quickly learn to keep on the main road. Most of the roads on the island are paved, but some are steep, narrow and run down, so be careful. By the way, driving is on the left in Grenada, and you'll need a local permit, which your car rental company can help you with. Here's some additional information. To enter Grenada, you'll need a proof of onward travel. If you're island hopping in the Caribbean, the spontaneity of your trip may be limited by this rule. You'll also need a Type-G plug for your electronics. Mike and I rented a car and drove around the entire island. Here we, go. we made a point to stop at almost every beach and covered not only the coastal roads, but also drove across the interior of the island. We wanted to see it all. I'm going to show you all the places we liked most. If you're visiting Grenada on a cruise ship and cannot rent a car, there are several day trips you can book to see the best of the island. Let's start by visiting Grenada's most beautiful beaches. Grand Anse is my favorite beach on the island. Grand Anse is a very long beach, and true to its name, it's grand. It's a gorgeous beach with soft white sand and transparent water. You can find a few trees with shade here and there, but you're mostly in the sun, so don't forget your hat and your sunscreen. There are a few hotels and restaurants right on the beach. Gondance is open and spacious, with great views of the capital, San Georges. This beach is easily accessible by public transport if you don't have a car. There are shared minivans that can take you pretty much anywhere around the island. Morne Rouge Beach. This is a very photogenic beach with super thin, soft yellow sand and a fantastic water visibility. Lots of locals come here and the beach is packed on weekends. If you drive here from town, make sure to put La Plywood Beach Cafe as your destination. Otherwise, Google offline maps might send you on a road above the beach. This bay is very calm and a wonderful place to watch the sunset. Further down is Magazine Beach. This is a very long and very wide beach. The shore gets deep very fast, making Magazine Beach a great place for swimming. The water is gorgeous. On weekends, the locals organize big barbecues and parties on this beach. We came here on a Sunday afternoon and the beach was packed with people blasting music and having fun. It's a very lively atmosphere. Even though there were a lot of people standing under the shades of the trees, Magazine Beach did not feel overcrowded. And it was fun to witness a local party. Lance aux Epines is a charming beach with clear water and soft sand. The left side of the beach feels very local, while on the right side you can find private villas, a couple of nicer resorts and several restaurants. We liked this charming beach a lot and enjoyed the delicious lunch at the sand bar and grill with our toes in the sand. 
Groom's Beach is a smaller tucked away beach. We had rented an Airbnb nearby and loved being able to walk over here. There is one smaller hotel on this beach. There is also some major construction going on on the far left side of the bay. And soon, what looks like a big hotel will take over the stretch of land. We heard great things about Pink Jin Beach, but unfortunately we did not find a way to get in. You might have to go through the Sandals Hotel to reach this beach. I'm going to show you four more beaches you might find interesting. If you don't have much time on Grenada though, it's not worth visiting them. La Sagesse Beach is a smaller, secluded beach in a horseshoe bay. I don't think many people come here. There's a small boutique hotel on this beach and the guests of the hotel have the beach to themselves. The palm trees provide plenty of shade and the beach is wide. The water was rough with bigger waves during our visit in April. There's a beach bar and restaurant part of the hotel. We did not have time to eat here, but people online are raving about the food at this quiet little place. Bathway Beach is a very long stretch of a beach with lifeguards, bathrooms and showers. This beach feels very local. Again, the water was rough on this side of the island during our visit in April. Livera Beach is known for its ladderback turtle nesting season. Turtles come here to lay their eggs. Livera is a long beach at the point of the island, with some wave currents meeting here. It's not a great place for swimming. You can see Sugarloaf Island, Green Island and Sandy Island from here. This beach was guarded by park rangers and felt very wild. Dukan Bay is a smaller, local beach. I found this beach very charming. It was getting late in the day and we did not have time to walk on this little bay or jump in the water. In terms of the overall landscape, between La Sagesse Beach and Bathway Beach, there are many wild beaches with darker sand. During our visit in April, the water was rough on this side of the island and we did not swim anywhere here. Sotter Town and Lippers Hill at the top of the island have steep cliffs, a window in the rocks, and a hill behind the houses you can jump off if you'd rather end your life than surrender to your enemies. Sorry about the gloom, this story is part of the local history. Between Victoria and St. George's, the coast is dotted with small villages and bays that are not set up for swimming or lounging near the water. There is not much to see here, but it's a pretty drive following the rocky shoreline with cliff views and fishing bays. Guav is the biggest town in your drive through At the bottom of the island, here, you will find rocky landscapes with waves crashing onto the cliffs. There are high-end neighborhoods with big houses on this side of the island. It's also very windy down here. The inside of the island is hilly. You'll be driving up and down on extinct volcanoes. The landscape is charming, even though some of the roads are built on steep slopes and are a bit scary to drive on. Plenty of farm animals are roaming around. Chickens, goats, donkeys. The roads are also overgrown with wildflowers and trees. Everywhere you look, you'll see Grenada's jungle. It's a very exotic atmosphere. Grenada is a tropical island and when it rains, it pours. But the rainfall is often very quick. The island is lush green with a year-round growing season and a wide variety of tropical fruits, flowering shrubs and ferns. There are small villages, mainly near the coast, but also in the interior of the island. Now that we've covered Grenada's landscape and the best beaches, I want to share with you our favorite things to do on the island. Something I really enjoyed was a visit to the Belmont Estate Chocolate Factory. I tried all the chocolate brands on the island and my favorite is the Belmont Estate. The tour of the estate was fantastic! It lasted about an hour and our guide showed us the entire process of making chocolate, from planting to harvesting the trees to extracting cocoa and mixing the chocolate bars. Very cool. It's the bitterness within the bean that subsidizes and the chocolatey brown color together with the chocolate flavor. And that was the first chocolate ever in Grenada. And in my opinion, it's still one of the best chocolates ever. This tour was very informative and so worth it. So once we complete the fermentation, we have the dry. While drying for eight days, ladies, barefooted. Every half an hour, you get in here and walk the bean to speed up the drying, turn them over, exposing them to air and sunshine. So, come. Yeah, oh, okay. Take off your footwear and go in. You sure? Yeah, go in. Okay. So, under, okay. a push. 
Ah, under and push. Them. Yes. I can do that. Thank you. Three, two, one. <laughs> Besides chocolates, the Belmont estate also produces fresh goat cheese you can try as well. The estate has 400 hectares of untouched jungle. Have a look on their Facebook page for information on any upcoming events. If you're interested in plants, there are several gardens you can visit on the island. We did not have time to see them all and decided to visit the Laura Spice and Herb Garden. There is a small entrance fee if you want to do the guided walking tour. The tour took 30 minutes and even though the lady rushed a bit her explanations, I really enjoyed learning about the culinary and medicinal use of the spices and herbs that grow on the island. We saw cocoa trees, allspice, nutmeg, mace, cinnamon, turmeric, various kinds of thyme, clove, pepper, vanilla, different fruits, lemongrass and many other plants. Talking about spices, I also wanted to visit the nutmeg processing station. I read so many great reviews about the tour of the factory. Unfortunately, the station was in the process of relocating to Victoria and had suspended all tourist visits. If you have the chance, go see them. Grenada is famous for its nutmeg and it's the world's second largest producer. Nutmeg is even featured on the flag of the country. We enjoyed the visit to the Grand Etang National Park. There is a small fee to pay and a visitor center with information about the park. There is a short walk behind the visitor center that will lead you to a viewing platform. We tried to do a longer hike around the crater lake, but abandoned the effort quickly as the path was very muddy. The national park is not set up that well for hiking, most of the trails were overgrown and the signage was missing. Despite that, it's worth driving to the park to have a look at the visitor center and stop at the crater lake of the old volcano. This subterranean world is home to a diverse aquatic flora and fauna. This natural reservoir collects torrential water and is a source of water supply for the island. If you're lucky, you can spot a mona monkey in the trees around the lake. Originally from Western Africa, mona monkeys were transported to Grenada aboard slave ships. And Grenada is the only place outside of Africa where you can see mona monkeys. We also enjoyed hiking to the Seven Sisters waterfalls. Be warned that this hike can be very muddy. There are seven waterfalls in total. We decided to do the shorter hike, which took about 20 minutes. We saw two out of the seven waterfalls. For the other five falls, we were advised not to go there, as once you climb up to the top of the trail, apparently the only way down is to jump in one of the falls. I'm not sure if this is true. We looked for the trail going up, but found only a steep, rocky climb on the side of the falls. The terrain was muddy and slippery, and we decided to skip climbing up. The two falls we saw were plenty beautiful and made the walk worth it. By the way, if you decide to do this hike, you'll need to pay a small fee at this location. It's important to drive or walk all the way to this little black house before you pay. There are scammers along the way that will try and make you pay beforehand or will ask you to park your car and pay for parking far away from the entrance of the hike. When we did this hike, parking in front of the little black house was free. We also received some walking sticks with the entry fee, which came in handy. There is one more spot I really wanted to visit on the main island, the Grenada Underwater Sculpture Park. A word of advice, sign up for a snorkeling or a diving trip around the island. We attempted to find the sculpture park by ourselves and failed. Unless you have a boat and know where to anchor, it will be tough to get there by yourself. Let's head to Kiriaku Island next. Remember how I told you that from Guadeloupe all the way down to Grenada, Kiriaku is my favorite island? This island is fantastic, very laid back and relaxing. We loved it so much, we even fantasized of buying a house here. Kiriaku is the second biggest island in Grenada. You cannot visit Grenada without seeing Kiriaku. The island is an hour and a half away by ferry from mainland Grenada. The ride can be bumpy as the ferry passes nearby the underwater volcano Kikimjeni. Don't forget your motion sickness medicine if you need it. Kiriaku means island surrounded by reefs. This tiny island is known for its clear waters, pristine coral reefs 
and magical drifts. The most beautiful beach on the island is Paradise Beach. It's a long beach with powdery white sand and beautiful water. Right in front of Paradise Beach sits Sandy Island. This tiny stretch of land is gorgeous and so photogenic. We had a blast exploring this island and snorkeling off its coast. At some point, we were the only two people on the island. We felt so happy to be in this piece of paradise by ourselves. Our own little planet surrounded by green blue ocean. It started raining out of nowhere and the tiny droplets of water felt so good on my face. There's something about the unknown, the wonder of discovery and the travel memories that stay with us forever. It's easy to get to Sandy Island. There are speedboats parked on Paradise Beach that can give you a ride. And if you decide to order food at the Paradise Beach Club, you'll get a special price on the boat ride to Sandy Island. The food at Paradise Beach Club is fantastic and I highly recommend having lunch or dinner here. At night, there's often live music as well. This toes in the sand island atmosphere is very relaxing. If you have enough time on Kerieku, you can also visit the Petit Carnage Beach and Sanctuary. Petit Carnage is a bird sanctuary and turtle nesting ground. If you're lucky, you can see new hatchlings heading for the sea. If you're interested to find out more about turtle nesting season or volunteer opportunities, have a look at the website and Facebook page of the YWF Kido Foundation. You'll find all these links in the description below this video. There is a hiking trail through the shrubs and mangroves that leads you to the beach. The trail is marked with seashells and goes through a red mangrove nursery. Petit Carnage is a very long beach. It was completely deserted during our visit, not a single person around. There is a shipwreck standing in the shallows of the bay that makes for fun photos. We spend a couple of hours walking around and enjoying this side of the island. To get here, we used Island's public transport, a local shared minivan. There are many minivans that crisscross the entire island. The central pickup point is in Hillsboro, the largest town on the island. If you need assistance finding the right minivan, just ask a loco. People in Grenada are always happy to help. Kirieku has several small villages and a tiny main town of Hillsboro. Everyone is on island time and every house has at least one pet goat running around. There is one more place I want to show you, Anse La Roche Bay. This is a beautiful hidden beach. You need to book a motorboat to get there. The beach is famous for Chef Tim's grilled lobsters, the best in the Caribbean. Many people have learned about this little bay and Chef Tim, and the beach can get crowded with private boats and boat tours coming to enjoy the food. It's worth the effort to come here. You can spend the entire day on the beach or just go out in the afternoon for an early dinner. We found Chef Tim's contact details online and booked our boat ride and food directly with him. We came here in the afternoon and stayed over for sunset. Alright, this concludes our tour of Grenada. But before I let you go, there is a tree I would like to tell you about. Are you familiar with these tiny green apples? Meet the Manchineo tree. It's poisonous, so please avoid it. According to the Guinness Book of Records, this is the most dangerous tree on earth. Its sap can cause blindness and blistering, and its fruits will give you internal bleeding. In other words, stay away. You will see this tree on many islands in the Caribbean. The tree is particularly poisonous when it's wet, so do not stand under a Manchineo tree when it rains. Typically, people in the Caribbean put signs on each tree. However, if you go to more secluded beaches, you'll need to learn to recognize this tree and avoid it. I hope you enjoyed your tour of Grenada with me, and thank you for watching this video. Without your watch time and subscriptions, this channel could not exist. If you have been to Grenada and have favorite places or tips to share, please list them in the comments below this video so others can read and benefit from your experience. 
Thanks again and see you soon.